The majority of Nvidia GPU owners still choose to go with an Nvidia GPU even if they could find a faster AMD card for a lower price. Blame AMD's GPU driver that to this date is having some serious problems despite being in the game for two decades. It's not that AMD hasn't improved its drivers over time and that only AMD GPU users face bad driver issues, but it's much more common to see driver problems with AMD cards than Nvidia ones. The recent AMD driver issue is one of the worst you could think of and even though the issue is rare, I don't think it is okay to have your customers face issues like fully curved operating systems just by using your drivers. Around a month ago, some AMD GPU users were complaining on Twitter that their Windows operating system got pricked by just installing the latest Adrenaline 23.2.1 driver. This particular instance happened only when users reported their system after a successful driver install or update and hardly anyone could get into their OS. Even though there were already like a dozen complaints, AMD did not acknowledge or address the issue until the executive editor of PC World faced the same consequence. The difference here was that he installed a newer 23.2.2 version of the driver and got his windows bricked. Fortunately, being the executive director of such a large publication helped him get the response from AMD in a few minutes and AMD issued this statement. It said that they recommend users to pause any Windows updates before installing the driver and unchecking the factory reset option in Adrenaline software. Because this issue only occurred when the users installed or updated their AMD drivers while Windows was updating in the background. Both Windows 10 and 11 are affected by this problem, so if you are using an AMD GPU, make sure to stop any Windows updates before you install the newer Adrenaline driver. I hope that AMD fixes the issue soon just like Intel is fixing various issues with its ARC drivers. So far Intel is seen to be fixing a lot of problems in its GPU drivers which were pretty bad a few months ago. One of the most important fixes was to lower the idle power consumption of ARC GPUs that were consistently consuming 40 plus watts with no load whatsoever. Even though Intel provided some steps to fix the problem last year, the problem of higher GPU usage still remained a problem with the multi-monitor setup, which is quite normal but it should have been a little lower. Thankfully Intel has fixed the problem with its latest 4146 driver which should do better this time. It does not fix the problem 100% across all monitors but with this driver update you can now at least bring down the power consumption significantly if you are using dual monitors with resolutions including ultra wide 1080p and 900p simultaneously. With the previous driver versions, the ARC GPUs would easily consume 40 to 50 watts but with this latest one, the power consumption comes down to less than 10 watts which is impressive. I think now Intel needs to work on bigger resolutions here because most dual or triple monitor setups use at least dual 1080p monitors which are not covered under this fix. Moreover, you also have to consider the refresh rate of your monitor because this update does not fix high power consumption issues if your monitor has a refresh rate higher than 60Hz. Note that Intel GPUs are not the only ones that are facing high power consumption issues in an idle state but this problem is supposedly also there with Nvidia and AMD graphics cards. The only difference is that those GPUs are somewhat better on higher resolutions but I think Intel is not that far away. Lastly, you might have heard about Nvidia's VSR technology for improving the video quality on your browser but now both Microsoft and Intel are joining the AI race that promises better video quality through their own upscaling method. Microsoft just added a new feature called Video Super Resolution that is going to work for resolutions lower than 720p. The condition is that the video must not be smaller than 192 pixels whether it is in width or height and it also won't work with streaming services like Netflix or Amazon Prime. So so basically it won't be even that beneficial compared to Nvidia's VSR and some users have already compared the two where Nvidia's VSR looks far better than Microsoft's upscaling method. At least Microsoft VSR has some requirements that are comparatively lower than Nvidia's VSR like users with any Nvidia RTX GPU whether it is from 20, 30 or 40 series or AMD's RX 5000 to 7000 GPUs can enable this feature. Currently 50% of the users can access this feature by enabling the VSR on the Edge browser with full support coming soon considering that the users meet all the conditions. Intel on the other hand has also developed its video super resolution from Chromium browsers which is already enabled for some Intel GPUs but require a manual change where users must add a special command to the Chrome properties. As of now users with 10 gen Intel CPUs or Intel R graphics cards can enable Intel VSR but as per the reports it is not 
not officially supported by Intel, which is why it is best to wait before Intel announces its official launch. Except for this, nothing much seems to be going on here and this is why Nvidia's VSR is probably the best choice as of now. I am currently preparing a special video on Nvidia's VSR analysis which should be coming in a few days. Make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications to get notified when I upload that video. You can also follow me on Twitter, the link is in the description and I will see you next time.